All right, folks, you should be able to hear me. Give me a five by five. I appreciate it. Thank you, Daniel. Just wait for one more person to confirm they can hear me. Love and gratitude. Caesar. Okay, all right. So, before I get into this one, I want to kind of like press it by saying I am going to talk about things that's probably ruffle some feathers. It won't all be focused on trading, but the benefit of the conversation is for you to be prepared. So that way, if you are speculating, at least this is not going to be one of the things, hopefully, that will be a hindrance to you doing well. At the beginning of this session here, I want to kind of like bring to your attention the folks that are in my mentorship. I have not had my laptop with me and with all the stress that was brought on by my daughter you losing her in an accident i didn't want to put any kind of thought behind anything my focus was there so uh, there hasn't been any update to them and i haven't done anything on youtube as a result so this is my first day back home so i'm a little jet lagged a little bit not that i flew anywhere but being in a car you know that long so, so. <laughs> um so I'm going to talk a little bit about what's been going on, what's likely to occur. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I used to trade because I get a lot of questions for that and where we're going with the YouTube channel. So that way, you know, the topics we're, we're covering. I'm going to get the stuff out of the way that most of you don't want to hear. Um, at the end of this, I guess, the stream or Twitter spaces, uh, if you're following along, the minute marker that I transitioned from the tinfoil hat stuff that I'm going to start with, if you could help me out, just add a comment or reply to the tweet I just gave for the invitation for all of you to be here and listen. Um, it's going to sound political, but I'm not political. I'm not. I'm. I don't vote. I don't do any of those things because you know I'll talk about that in a couple minutes, but. After I get through that portion of the discussion, I know some of you don't want to like hear those hear those discussions and, and that noteworthy information because it is. But I appreciate and understand and respect you guys in regards to your opinion about what it is that you want to filter out of your time and day. So if you could just share the minute marker, that way you can say to avoid tenfold hat discussion and put the minute marker where I do that during this discussion. I would appreciate because I'm not going to go back and listen to when I did that and do that as a post to the Twitter. So that way, all of you guys can come back to this at a later time once it's done and you can avoid listening to all these things that might hurt your feelings or make you upset or make you think that I'm a, a jerk or you, you now found a reason to hate me. <laughs> that, that's not what I'm doing, okay? But it's certainly gonna sound polarizing in the beginning, but I promise you, if you are an independent thinker and you critically think about the things I'm gonna lay out in front of you today, uh, hopefully it will be a benefit to you. I believe it will be, regardless of whatever your political slant is. <clears throat> so, just to bring everybody up to speed, I see a lot of people tweeting, saying, "You know, hope my daughter's okay. Hope I'm okay. Uh, we're all we're all fine." Real quick, I'll just give you two minutes of this. Um, my daughter lives in out of state. She lent her car to a family member, got an accident. They t-boned a person that was driving totaled her car. We went down a month ago to help her pick out a car. All the car lots down there have used cars like everywhere else and new cars are hard to get. So I'm a Toyota fanboy. Uh, I think they're reliable. So I just recently traded in my 2019 Highlander because we left the sunroof open and it rained twice in it. So yeah. Uh, so I traded that in. It gave me 3000 less than I paid, which is crazy. And I bought a new 2022 Platinum Highlander. And I only had 200 and some miles on it. So I said to my daughter, I said, I'll drive it down to you. 
and you can have that. So that's where we were. And one of the things that I observed, you know, driving was there was very little trucks, like tractor trailers on the road. Usually, you know, they're all over the place and they're holding you up. And I didn't see very many of those. And some of the fuel trucks that you see all the time, the big tankers that deliver gasoline and such, I didn't see any of them. And we did a lot of driving. So you you would expect obviously to see some of those types of things. You're probably thinking to yourself, what is this talk what what is this talk about? What are you what are you bringing this up about? Um back in 2016, before I even launched that was a you know paid group type thing. Before I even did that, I was on Twitter, I was talking about certain things that would either be on my mind and sometimes it would seem cryptic. And sometimes when I post certain things, if you're not really familiar with me or familiar with the topics that I cover, uh, I'll post things that are like a follow up to something that my core audience knows about. And usually if you post a reply to like, you know, what is this about? Those that are in the know with me that have been following me for a while, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, last time I was on Twitter, okay, I was posting things that just never made its way to my feed. And that's the reason why I left. No one ran me off of Twitter. And I'm right here again. So anybody can come here and say whatever they want to say. And we'll address whatever you want to talk about. No problem. It's, it, you know, this is an open forum now. I'm not going to be creating a Telegram channel for everybody to come to. I'm not going to create a Discord channel to, for everybody to come to. Because all that is is trying to lure you away to somehow put a scam on the people that want to do that. I'm right here where it's free. Everyone can listen to me. Everyone can talk to me. If it's something I want to reply to, I'll reply to. If it's something that's already been talked about, usually I'll just pass it by because it's something that's already, if you just look around and listen to videos or other tweets update I made, it's pretty much addressed already before. But there's really no reason to go anywhere else. You know, and I think this is a little bit better approach to the comment section on YouTube because honestly, I can't keep up with all those comments. It's too many. I can't keep up with emails. It's too many. So, the reason, number one reason I'm even talking to you is because I know most of you are oblivious to what's about to happen. You're running around worrying about keeping up with the Joneses. You're trying to make money, which that's admirable. You should be trying to do that because you're going to need it. But a lot of times people don't want to hear the uncomfortable truth. The uncomfortable truth was being shown to you and revealed to you back in 2016. Now, again, if I were asked what political slant would I be closely leaning towards? Okay, it would, I guess it would be Republican, but I don't vote. I have never voted. I don't believe in the vote. I think it's rigged. Okay, uh, a lot of you all realize that the manip manipulation that took place in the uh, recent election, that has been going on for decades. <laughs> I mean, it was just blatant this time. Everybody sees it. And I know some of you are already unplugging right now because you're a Democrat. Listen, put that aside for a moment, okay? Because I'm not trying to tell you to vote for anybody. I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm here for, okay? I want to talk to you just like you're my friend. We haven't seen each other for a while. I want to bring up the speed about what's going on and what my opinion is. You're all welcome. You're absolutely welcome. I'm encouraging you to share your opinion. If you don't agree with what I'm going to share today, say so in the comment section of this, I guess, the, the Twitter. If you're in agreement, okay. If you're not, I don't care. I'm not twisting anybody's arm. But I, I'm all about independent thought, independent thinkers. I don't follow anybody. Okay, I don't subscribe to anybody's logic. Nothing. I don't look at anyone and say, I want to mimic their viewpoint. I look at things very critical. I'm an analytical thinker. I look at things in a way that who benefits from this? How can I be victimized by it? And how can I prevent this from being harmful to me or my family? Everything that comes into my life, everything I treat like that. If you believe in this two-party system, you're a fool because you are now part of the game because they're one and the same. They're two wings of the same bird. And it's meant, it's meant to confuse you, to keep you focused on things that you have no control over, period, in the story.
the elections have not been fair since Reagan. So with that out of the way, that's the that's the whole point of me describing how I'm not political here. I'm not trying to be political. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care if you vote. OK, I'm just telling you, pay attention. I'm going to lay some breadcrumbs down and you just start to you figure out where I'm going with this and see if it's not where we close this discussion. But in 2016, I came out and I said, in July, I tweeted something really bad's coming. Get yourself ready. And it's going to be worse than 9-11. Because in, in September 11th, when that day happened, that became the beginning of anxiety for me. I didn't realize it was anxiety, but it started then. Like, it really, really started then. And for my family being out in public places and a terrible feeling. And the media kept telling everyone with these little color-coded schemes of terror threat would be yellow or red or orange. And it's like, what the hell? Like, it was always kind of trying to keep you in a state of fear. And that's what the market does. The market does that. It, it creates and disrupts sentiment or engineers sentiment. And when you watch your television, and I have nine of them in my home, okay? I have nine televisions, and I can tell you, one of them gets used maybe, and I'm talking maybe, four hours total for the week. So what do I watch? I don't watch the news, okay? Uh, the topics that I'm going to cover here, I've had people literally quit my mentorship, raging, because they thought I was pro-Trump. No. I didn't vote for Trump. I didn't vote for the other guy. I didn't vote for anybody. I've never voted. So I'm absolutely objective here. I have nobody that I'm rooting for because no matter who you vote for, it isn't going to, the votes don't count. It's the illusion that you had the chance to do it. And you all believe it. It's like WWF wrestling. It's all scripted. There's a face and there's a heel. No matter who you want to win, the outcome is already determined because there's an agenda. There's a ruling class of people, folks, and they're not Democrat and they're not Republican. They're globalists. That's that's what's going on here. That's what's being pushed. And in 2016, before Trump was elected, I told everybody on Twitter. He would be elected. Trump would be the winner. I would be interested to see what they do with him once he's in office. And I said plainly, I said, the economy is going to get great under him because he's a businessman. And why would they want to do that? Why would they want to let someone come in if it's rigged? Why would they let that guy come in? Like, why, why are you going to you know, bring up this idea that it's rigged? And why would they let somebody like that guy, of all people, be the president? Because you were all distracted with everything else around the world and in your own personal life. You wanted to feel like a American. You wanted to be... Uncle Sam's best son or daughter. You want to feel good about the country because that hadn't happened in a long time. We forgot about patriotism. Patriotism is something that was lacking. And then when you bring this guy, this ideology that he encapsulates, make America great again. Great slogan, great idea. I appreciate all that. But what this really was, and I really want you to think about this, it got everybody thinking about being patriotic and picking a side. Second Amendment, don't tread on me. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. We're the greatest in the world. Our nation's the strongest, this, that, and the other thing. Yes, our economy was doing great during the era of Trump, and that was the intended point. And that's exactly what I said. They're going to use Trump to pump it, to get everybody emotionally connected. When they weren't given a shit, about who was in the office. They didn't care. Obama was a failure. I didn't vote for him, but I would have been his first term. I felt it was time for that. But guess what? That was a joke. Everything, everything in that guy's terms, joke. Trump did some things correct, but mostly think about what he was being used for. He was fanning the flames constantly. He was a fire starter. 
That's that's how you get everybody committed emotionally and psychologically to the agenda that they're getting ready to pull on everybody. And they've been doing it. And for the most part, people have bought it hook, line and sinker. It was like a Judas swing. In political slant or thinking or ideology. Let's care about this person, this this guy. He's got all the answers. The fuck he does. He doesn't have shit. He is part of it. He is part of it. He was used as the fall guy. Why? Why would they do that? Because they want everybody to love John Cena or Hulk Hogan or whoever the face of the company is. So that way, when he's done dirty by a Ric Flair or some other negative side of the script, their counterparty. Oh, Trump was victimized. It was the, the election was stolen. It wasn't stolen. It was rigged the entire time before he ever even came a, a candidate. Since Reagan, these things have been controlled. Period. You think you have a choice. You have none. The only choice is, do you waste your time voting? Or don't you just watch this theater playing out? Because it's going to, regardless of what I say here today, and whatever you subscribe to, or whatever you believe, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. They're in every form of government in every in every every position of leadership they're there that's the hand that's the people that roll that roll everything your presidents of your country they're muppets they don't do shit they're just the person to either look towards and trust in the beginning or blame when it doesn't go the way that everybody hoped for that's all it is Governments, elections, you know, leadership and and nations and such. Those people don't. If you believe that that's true, why aren't things changing? When we vote, the people that supposedly do the right things in their campaigns. Why don't they make those changes happen? Because they're not permitted. It's all manipulation. It's all things that are leading to a crescendo that nobody, and including me, is prepared for. And I have said this stuff in my private mentorship when I left Twitter, when they started censoring my tweets and things were being flagged and they were sending me notices saying, you know, you can't post this kind of stuff. I'm like, what? Uh uh. I already got a bullseye I mean, there. So I said, I said, I'm just going to leave. I'm done. But I was saying these things in my private forum, in my paid group. And literally, I would get emails from people would say, F you, you know, because they're Democrat or they're not American. And they're like, I didn't pay to learn all this stuff. When this stuff matters, folks, why, why am I even talking to you today? Am I getting any ad revenue off of this? No. I want you to understand what's coming for it and choose to do nothing. It's your choice. You can do that. But I'm going to tell you something. The same people that wrote me emails said, fuck you, ICT. You're nuts. You're insane. Chrissy Thirst, you're nut. I don't listen to Alex Jones. He's part of it. I know I just lost some viewership there too. All of this is a script. Okay? All of it is. And you're being bought and sold down the river. Each one of us are. You don't want to hear these things because it's uncomfortable and it doesn't have anything to do with buying order blocks and breakers and fair value gaps. But I'm going to tell you something. In the next 12 to 18 months, the way you live right now, it's not going to be like that. It is not going to be like that. The way I live is not going to be the way I live right now. And there's absolutely nothing I can do to that. Nothing. There's nothing that you can do to change it, except for prepare your house and get your house in order. How do you do that? Well, in 2016, I said that they were going to put Trump in there. They were going to use him as a means of pumping up everything, getting everybody patriotic again. And then they're going to use him as a fall guy when they collapse the economy. I shit you not. I'm telling you right now, people that were following that, you reply. Reply to that invitation to come to this 
Twitter space that I just tweeted before I started doing this discussion today. If you were following me years ago in 2016, you tell me I'm a liar or you say I, I read those tweets. I saw that because I want people to understand what I'm saying. I'm not talking about my ass here. This is really real shit. This whole idea of getting Trump in office and then stealing the election from him. You know what that's intended to do? It's intended to have people go outside and tear shit up. But they want. They want that. Why would they want that? Why do governments keep pushing their people in the, in the state of mind where they're going to say, you know what, fuck it, I don't care. I still lose. It's, just, it's, it's game time. That's what they want. They all want that because it's martial law then. But guess what happens in martial law or what doesn't happen in martial law? Elections. That means they stay in power and the excuse is no more COVID. We don't need that. No more masks. We don't need that. What do you think happens, okay? What do you think happens when one day we're just going about our business and all of a sudden a tactical nuke is dropped somewhere, say in Texas or Florida or some other state like New York or whoever, California? It doesn't have to be a big one. What are you going to be thinking then? Holy shit. Let me turn the TV on and see what's going on. They got you. Because you're going to be turning to them for the information and the instructions. There's a lot of people that the strings aren't tied to right now. And September 11th, that was the day I started watching the news every time it was on. And I found out that it was feeding me fear. And I had anxiety from that shit. It was debilitating. And I thought I had conquered it from the trading side but that stuff was scary like it was it was scary and i ain't gonna i ain't gonna be afraid to tell you i was fucking scared shitless because my family were spread out that day and i wanted them home immediately and every day they kept changing oh the terror threat this and terror threat that and the whole thing was them stealing oil that's what that was all about So for the people that mentorship and now they see all this shit happening, grocery stores, food processing plants being burned or blown up, crops not being planted like they're supposed to be, fertilizer 500% increased, and farmers are saying, fuck it, I'm not doing it. It ain't worth it. And government's paying farmers not to plant their crop. As I said before, everybody else was talking about it, folks. And I'm not here to beat my chest and say I'm smarter than everybody else, but I'm ahead of the fucking curve. And I try to do that with my entire life. And I'm telling you what is about to happen. None of you have any fucking idea how bad it's going to get. It's going to get so fucking scary that literally, unless you have food, water, means of getting that, you're going to be in a state of whatever they tell you to do, you're going to do it. I have, man, I have money out the ass. And I'm going to tell you something. I have no fucking idea where to put it. There's nothing safe to me about, oh, yeah, talk about crypto. Crypto's going to shit. It's going to shit. Every single one of it's going to shit. It was an IQ test, okay? Here's what it is. It's an IQ government put it in place. They did it. Satoshi, my fucking ass. Let me tell you something. It's NSA. They put this shit together. They put it together so that way you will all look for the solution. Because the whole idea of that crypto stuff was this. We're going to have an, a, a, a deregulated platform where you know the central banks can't do this, can't do that. Let me, t- <laughs> let me tell you something. As soon as they said, we're going to put a futures contract out. What did I all tell you? What did I tell you, all of you? I said, if they put a futures contract on it, done. your illusion has been exposed as Bullshit. Great. Bullshit. Because as soon as that futures contract came into position and it was being traded, suddenly I knew what the fuck that thing was doing. Because it's on the same algorithm. They, for whatever reason, I don't know this part, but they hold it in consolidations a lot longer than the other algorithm does that runs all these other markets. 
And that's the reason why I haven't touched it. Every major move in that fucking Bitcoin I have made publicly. I haven't done any secret kind of moves or anything like that. I've always said it publicly. And I'm going to tell you something. It will go to zero. It will go to zero. It will not be the currency that everybody goes to. It's not going to be the, the, the reserve currency of the world. But I'm going to tell you this. The thing that everybody will be put on will be on the blockchain. But every coin out there right now, every single fucking one of them, folks, every one of them will go to zero. Rip have been cheerleading ripple, ripple, ripple. Ripple's the one. Ripple is toilet paper. It's bullshit. All of it is bullshit. And you keep buying it. You keep thinking it. You keep piping it up. You reply to my tweets. You reply to other people's tweets. Like, like that's going to fucking matter. It's going to change the, the way it's going to. It's not going to change shit. You're emotional. You're fucking holding on to something that's going to zero. The IQ test was this. Will we be able to convince people to do things outside of the dollar, outside of the other currencies? And they created this frenzy. I said it wasn't going to go to 20,000 when it was 19,700 because my wife asked me, do you, do you trade Bitcoin? I said, what did you just say to me? Now, mind you, my wife doesn't know shit except for I spend too much time in front of these charts. Period. Okay. She thinks the money that comes in is from video games and shit, and she don't understand it. And she's been with me forever. This question, my wife asked me, do I trade Bitcoin? That was the moment I went right on Twitter. And people that were following me back then know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. I said, Bitcoin will not hit 20,000. My wife is sitting next to me on the couch, and she asked me if I'm trading Bitcoin. So if my wife is interested in Bitcoin now, that means there ain't a fucking person one that there's going to be a sucker. Every single one of them that would have ever bought it, has already bought it. Now they're going to reprice it down to $6,000. $6,000 Bitcoin, guess what, folks? From 19.7, went down to 6,000. And when we got to 6,000, I said it's going to go to 3,000 next. I was wrong. It went to 3,200. I said I would tell you when it was going to go to 20,000. I told you it was going to go to 20,000 on Christmas. Or by Christmas, rather. And I said 30000 by New Year's. And I was off by a few hours. It was January 2nd when it hit 30000 All public knowledge. All out there publicly. Not anybody else out there. Everybody out there has these cult-like followings. We'll say it like that. Uh, in crypto. When they don't even call a move right. They don't, they don't even know what they're doing. They're just running on this hype train. And that's how you know. That this shit is bullshit. Because they have a built-in hype team. And here's the thing. Why isn't your cryptocurrency going to the moon and beyond while all this bullshit's going on? Why is it falling victim too? Oh, but ICT, don't look at it from the trading. Think about it from the technology. I already told you. I already know the technology is here to stay. And I told you just now, again, for those that have missed this, everything I've mentioned, every time I've mentioned this, you hardliners in crypto, understand this, folks, okay? I'm not here to arm wrestle you. I'm not here to piss on your parade. I'm not here to try to tell you you're stupid, okay? I'm not saying any of that except for what are you going to do if it collapses like everything else is? Do you have everything in that? Because if you do, you're stupid. That's the only time you're going to be stupid. But it's falling and failing to do what every one of you were saying it was intended to do. It's going to be the, the, uh, the escape from fiat. Why the fuck is it failing like fiat? Why isn't everybody pouring into it now? Because they all realize it's all bullshit. See, in the beginning, it was new. It was a novel idea. You don't have that, oh, better not miss out on this. Because you know what they look at when they see that chart? It didn't go to 70,000, and we just went down below 20,000. How many people is that going to work up a frenzy in? They're alert, folks. They see it. That doesn't inspire going out and pouring everything they have into it. 
We're past that. So how are they going to work this? Well, there's a lot of money short. So you're going to see short-term little rallies that make it look like it's bottoming. Why will they do that? Just like I explained the other day, two days ago or three days ago, whatever it was, I facetiously post a, a tweet saying, oh, here we go, create a little move on the bottom of the recent decline ahead of 20,000, make it look like 20,000 support. Roll it, they put a 2,000 some point run on it. Right as I look at the timeline, and I sat back and smiled. I was like, this is some bullshit here. It's going to run out 20,000 because they want to bring short-term buyers in, build up liquidity. And that's how they're going to do it because they can't get out of their shorts unless people are doing what? Bring sell side because they got to buy it from somebody at a lower price, folks. Think, think, okay? Stop. Stop thinking about your favorite crypto team, your coin, your bullshit. Okay. Stop thinking about that. Think about how I'm explaining this before it happens, because when you start watching it and it's doing these things and you continuously hold on to this stuff for dear life, when it goes to zero, you cannot come back to me and say anything negative because I've told you what they're going to do before they do it. And if I'm wrong, Guess what? You get to all say, eat shit, motherfucker. You were wrong. But I'm telling you something right now. I am not going to be wrong. I am not. Absolutely not. And I, I am not short, trying to hype it lower. I've never touched ever a cryptocurrency with real money speculating behind it. Never, ever, ever, ever have I ever done it. And I tell you, I couldn't even open up a crypto account if I wanted to. I don't know that much about it. But I know enough to know that you're all holding useless illusions blockchain's here to stay baby i know i absolutely know that but they have to have a problem in that new space what is it the darling of it bitcoin failed oh shit bitcoin the answer to everything you can go out and buy everything with the ict what's wrong with you really Why is it failing? Because it's designed to. Because they're going to come out with a solution to the problem that is unreliable crypto. They're going to come out with some new coin. I don't know what it is, folks. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you what it ain't. It ain't Bitcoin. It ain't Ripple. It ain't all the ones that you already see right now. All of them will go to zero. Maybe not on the same day, but they're going to zero. And they're going to come out and say, okay, everybody relax. The dollars failed. The pound failed. The loony failed. All the currencies failed. Blockchain's the best way to do it because everything is logged and recorded, every transaction. It sounds good, doesn't it, when they paint it like that? Really what it is, it's control. You want everybody to know when you bought something and how many of it? Because I don't. And I don't do anything illegal. But I don't want them knowing everything and every quantity I pay for. That's too intrusive. But they want control of everything, folks. Everything. So that's why I'm telling you, I'm not anti-crypto because I want to be anti-crypto. I'm not here to start fires to get drama stirred up either, okay? Because I know some of you are already, I haven't looked yet, <laughs> but I know some of you are flipping the fuck out right now. Either you're print, you, you're typing up your tweet, getting ready to drop it down like you're going to make me change my mind about it. Let me tell you something, folks. I have been five years ahead of the curve since 1997. Before shit comes down the pike, I already know it's coming. My visibility is a little bit different. Okay, it's just, it is what it is. There's a relationship here that you're not privy to. So about certain things, and I put it out there, I'm doing it so that way you can prepare as best you can. When Trump didn't get the election, I said, you know, it's going to get stupid. 
we're going to be Venezuela 2.0. And I got laughed at. Again, people quit my mentorship, said I was full of shit. Forget the fact that I'm calling the markets every week, okay, and it's panning out. Their feelings were hurt, and they literally left the mentorship because of things I'm talking to you right now. And some of you are probably thinking, I'm unsubscribing because this guy is not a Biden supporter. He's not a Democrat. He's not a Republican. He doesn't love Trump. Let me tell you something, folks. I am absolutely outside of that. And I'm looking at it objectively. No matter what side of the coin you are on, if you're even subscribing to that view, that left-right paradigm, it's bullshit. You are part of the act. You are the intended audience. If you don't know where the mark is, you are the mark. And they sat back and they waited. They wanted to see people go nuts. They wanted people to go sh- you know, stupid. They wanted to go out and, and see the wild, wild west unfold. And guess what, folks? That's coming. That is coming. Wait until you see everywhere what I was seeing. Gas pumps with no gas. Gas is going to go higher than it is now. And when these trucks park, what trucks am I talking about? Those big tractor trailers that get in your way all the time on the road and you are pissed off and you jump in front of them and you brake check them. Those big trucks that are feeding your ass and your family and providing the stores with the goods that you got to go out and spend and do impulsive shopping on. All those things that you rely on, it's always going to be on the shelf. When they're not there, and you may have all the money in the world. I got shit tons of money, folks. But if it isn't there to buy, my money's useless. I am not exempt from this. I'm in this shit just like you are. So what have I been doing for the last two years? I've been buying up all kinds of shit for my friends and my family and myself. Multiple properties loaded up with shit. The property you see me working out of right now, that's just one of the most recent ones. I'm stocking up. I got multiple places. If I got to bounce, I got places to go. Why do you have all these cars, ICT? Because I guarantee you I got one to get the fuck out of Dodge when it comes. My shit's waiting for me in other places. I said this stuff publicly and everybody laughed at me. Everybody called me Chicken Little. They were talking all kinds of stupid shit. I'm going to tell you something. I've had about half of those people that quit my mentorship writing me tearful emails saying how stupid they fucking were and wish they could come back now. And it's no. Not because I'm mad at them. Because nobody's joining my mentorship. That private group is closed. It's done. I am teaching mentorship on Twitter. I am teaching you how to do things on your own, independently. As long as there's a market, this stuff will work. Which brings me to why am I not in crypto? I'm I'm not sorry. I told you why I'm not in crypto, but why am I not actively in Forex? I believe that there is a black swan event coming. Now, what is a black swan event? Something that no one sees coming, but I'd see it coming. And it's going to be so bad and so fast and sudden that if I trade, it could hurt me bad. And anybody doing it also could get hurt. Up until November this year, I think that we are in that season of black swan event. Before Russia went into Ukraine, I said that was going to happen. Before... China, defeating it again, before it gets in your news, these are all things I've talked about. I said also that they would weaponize food in March of 2020. I made it public knowledge. I hinted at it in 2019. And on July tweet, I said that something wicked was coming. They're going to do something worse than 9-11, and they're going to control everybody, and they're going to use something maybe biological, and maybe they're going to do something with food. Well, I don't know about you, but I didn't take that fucking shot, and I never will. And they did that part. They closed businesses down. They'll send billions of fucking dollars to Ukraine, where the DNC servers are. But they won't bail out the businessman and woman that had to shutter their doors while Walmart was allowed to be open. Walmart was a fucking essential. 
But if you owned a restaurant or if you owned a small store, you weren't essential. Listen, folks, I don't care if this truth doesn't taste good or not. This is the way it is. You need to think about things like this because this isn't just an American thing. It's happening everywhere. And that's how you know we're in some deep shit. And in America, we had the Second Amendment right. Of course, you know, that's what they're banking on. Let people go out in the street and say, yeah, we're going to hear it. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. It's 1776. When that ha really happens after that, all hell breaks loose. It won't be our military turning on us, even though we do, we do have some nut jobs in there that want to see that happen. Because I'm of the belief that real Americans would never turn their weapons on citizens, even if the government says to do so. I know I wouldn't. I'd be like, whatever. I ain't doing it. Fuck you. It's going to be UN soldiers that come in here and do that. For 20 years, I've watched UN equipment be brought in here in this country, stationed all in every state. In every state. Why? Small little steps. That way you don't notice it. Small little incremental things, little moves that no one really pays attention to. And now we're at that stage of this whole event where he who controls the food, people. You might stand up and say, fuck Biden, fuck Trump, fuck everybody in the government. This one and that one. But guess what you're going to be doing when you can't feed yourself and your babies? Okay? Baby formula. Got any babies? You got any children that are infants? You know you can feed your baby whole milk. My mother didn't breastfeed me, and she didn't have the money to do formula. Whole milk it was. They've trained all of you to think that you need these things, these services. You don't. Man, we had life great before cell phones. I miss those days. Before social media, people talked. They could look right, you in, look right in the eye and say, this is what I think, and you'd have a conversation. And you wouldn't be offended. It would be just, oh, well, you know, I don't see it that way, but that's interesting how you have that viewpoint. Now it's like, fuck you. They want to cancel you. They want to come to your house. They want to do all kinds of terrible things. That's the intended purpose. That's why this shit was created. It's divide. It's not to bring people together. It's to divide. They got to create two large teams. And when those teams come together, that's the problem. The solution is they come in, martial law, boom, done. No rights. The Constitution completely is useless. And you don't even see it. You have no idea what's coming. You have no idea how bad it's going to get. I don't really know to get bad, but I know I don't want to be going through it. And there will be a time, and you can put this in your journal, and you can time and date stamp I said this. My private group has been told this, and I'm telling you publicly too. There is going to be a time. How long in duration? I don't know. But they're going to break the markets. They're going to basically make it where you can't trade for a period of time. No matter what you use to trade, it won't matter because you won't have access to the markets. Why would they want to do that? Because there's a lot of people all around the world that have now made this their business. They're the last ones on the hit list because they are knocking down everybody that has businesses right now. They're knocking down everybody that wants to try to buy a home Interest rates are going higher. Prices are ext extremely high. They're keeping you out of that ability to do that, to relocate to places that may be more supportive of the ideas that would be against what they're trying to do in their agenda now. There is no safe haven. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I titled this, you can't, because you can't eat your P&L. If you're making money, God bless you. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad I was helpful. Okay. But here's what you need to understand. Stop saving up for your Lambos. 
Okay. Stop going on your fucking vacations to go on Instagram and show people that you don't live in those homes. You don't drive those cars that you're renting and leasing. Stop that bullshit. You need to absolutely start buying fucking food. I have been long. Candles, canned food, bottled water, filters. Make me comfortable and my family comfortable. I have fucking clothes for 10 fucking years. Okay? I have 150 pairs of fucking shoes. 150 fucking pairs of shoes. Not that I'm ever going to use them all, but guess what? I'm a size 10. You know what? If you go on like Amazon and you try to buy shoes, that's the first fucking size that sells out. Size 10. That's the average man's shoe size. Because I know I'm going to meet somebody that's going to need a pair of fucking shoes. And I'm going to give them to them. I have to make sure I have some of my own. But I have plenty to hand out if I meet someone that is in need of it. Clothes. I got shit tons of fucking clothes. My family is stocked the fuck up on shit that you are taking for granted right now. When you can't get your can of chicken noodle soup. And you can't feed yourself or your kid. Let me tell you something. I try to live my life a certain way. Okay. But I have entertained the thought that if I couldn't feed my kids, what would I be willing to do? And that scared me to think what I would be willing to do. And you would too. Don't fucking stand on your moral high ground and say, oh, I don't care how it was going to be this bad. or I would never. Fuck you. You're a liar. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. If my kids are starving and I see you have one, somebody's going home with one. And that's as real as it's going to get. So I know if I'm capable of thinking like that, and the majority don't think like me, Real fucking dangerous. Real dangerous. Driving on the road last time I did a, a Twitter space. Guy literally almost ran over the front of my Corvette to get through a one-way bridge that I was essentially in the right of way of going onto. But he tried to flex, you know, through the windshield like he was gonna do something. And I thought I, you know, because when I'm talking. I do a lot of this kind of stuff in my recordings, but I, I go back and listen to it. And I'm like, I, I don't want to put that in there. I'll edit it out. And because this is the event, you know, when, when you hear me say whatever I'm saying, it's whoever's listening, hears it. So naturally when this guy's flexing you know, through the windshield, like he's going to do something. I, I told him, I said, I'm not going to beat your fucking ass. Okay. I, I mean, you're getting ready to ride over my car with your hooped up, uh, you know, pickup truck. It's off. I'm not moving anyway. I had two cars behind me. I couldn't back up. And I'm trying to tell him, wait a minute. <clears throat> so when we were driving to get to my daughter, road rage, you know, you was road raging on that guy. You weren't in the seat with me. You were listening like you were there. You didn't see what this guy was doing. So I felt like I was going to have to defend myself because I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what he's trying to do. He was doing like 70 mile an hour in an area where it's 30 mile an hour on a one-way bridge. And I started thinking to myself, am I boxed in? Because I had three cars behind me and this pickup truck. And I'm like, okay, I can't go anywhere. But that's okay. I had 17 brass friends that can go fast that day. <laughs> okay, sitting right next to me. But that kind of thought maybe escapes you now. Like, you don't think about those potential events unfolding. You're out doing your own thing. But you have something that somebody else wants. People are going to start to do things that aren't normal. They're cutting catalytic converters off of cars to get the metals inside of them, to get money for it. Try to get those replaced right now. You can't. Supply chain. Gas. People are having their gas tanks emptied out, cut, drained out. There it is. And you see people out there saying, oh, it's okay. I got one of those locking gas caps. <laughs> They're not siphoning out that shit anymore. They're cutting the fucking gas tank. They're right the car and draining it. Done. They don't care if you're ever going to be able to drive it again. They just want the money. They can't afford gas. There it is. So you're going to have a... a a uh, rude awakening soon, next 12 to 18 months, things are going to get really bad. 
fast. It's not going to be a gradual over time. It's going to be one day, something is going to be the trigger event. I might be wrong, but I think if what I'm expecting is going to occur, they're going to pull it off before November because they got to have a reason why that they can't let elections go through the way they normally would. Period. That way nobody can claim foul. And I'm going to tell you something. A small tactical nuke dropped on the soil of America, that's going to change everybody's viewpoint on a lot of things. And fear will become unprecedented. It will be unbelievably scary. And I ain't afraid to tell you, that would scare the shit out of me. I'm not walking around in a state of panic. I'm just saying that, how do you top 9-11? Well, what they just did with COVID. It's bullshit. I had it twice. I still can't smell right anymore. But I wasn't on a ventilator. I didn't go to the hospital. I slept for three days. Had a really bad headache. Tired like I've never been before. And then strangely on the fourth day, done. No problem. No thank you. I don't want your shots. So the Black Swan event in Forex that I think is coming could see a dramatic movement in price that is untradeable. It's something like uh, what I mentioned several times up now, talked about the Euro and Swissy being depicted. And it was such a sudden thing. You traded that, folks. Google it and, and see it for yourself. There's no way you could have traded that or survived it. And brokerage firms literally went under. Hedge funds went under that day and never came back. They failed. They were insolvent. Done. Dusted. Bagged and tagged. Ceased to do business. Can you weather something like that with your $200 account, $10,000 account, $100,000 account? I got a $500,000 Hanko trade account. Bullshit. You got fake money, but the ones that have real money, you can't weather that. And I got money, and I can't weather that. So I'm very, very cautious. I've told my own mentorship group. And believe me, I got people in there kicking and screaming all the time. Come on, ICT. When are you going to get back in, into Forex? I'll, I'll talk about the Forex market. I'm saying what I think is going to happen there. That's their mentorship. But I'm not making videos for them saying, you know, this is what I think is going to happen. I'm showing them a chart. This is what I'm expecting. But they all know I'm not touching it. Why? Because I just told you. I'm expecting something bad. Sudden movement that is unexpected that I expect coming. I can't pin it down to a specific day. That's what makes it a black swan event. Black swan is something that you just don't expect it to happen. It, it just boom, it happens. We're also in a season where a false flag is going to unfold. A false flag is where, in my opinion, something like that would be like a tactical nuke being dropped in the United States mainland somewhere. And then another country being blamed to do it. And they didn't necessarily didn't do it. That's a false flag event. Those types of events get used for geopolitical and for financial gain. So if the last two years haven't at least taught you, don't sell short the levels that people will go to. Nothing will. Nothing will. And you'll just be a good cheap. And get sheared whenever they want to come around and take it from you. So when I decided to say I'm going to come out and teach how to trade and mentorship level insights on YouTube for free. My first target was the people out there that try to sell my own videos. And I have lots of those people in my mentorship still. And they're out there on Instagram trying to sell videos. But here's what happens when the people buy that. They see that I was only talking about things for that immediate day or the next day. And that's why I did the videos the way I did it. Because I didn't know that people would be in them trying to make money off of it. And I get it. I understand the hustle. I get it. But the people that buy it, they're not getting what they hope to get. Because I was teaching very time-sensitive things at that moment. The core content, I kept them on YouTube. 
That's the real mentorship. That's the mentorship, you know, the teachings. But being mentored by me was me using the concepts, calling the market beforehand. That was mentorship. That was the thing that people were there for. Seeing how I use the information. Can I can I see the markets moving before they happen? And is it going to go to where I say it's going to go? And largely, a 90 degree, and people even that have my pirated copies can attest to this. It's 90%. It's whatever I say is going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't need to defraud anybody. I don't need to pretend anything. I know what's happening. Just look around, folks. There's enough evidence to support that what I say happens, happens. And that's not ego. It's just to remind you that I came out here and left. And left millions of dollars. And I'm telling you right now, my following right now is at the highest it's ever been. And it would be very easy, very fucking easy for me to go out there and say, we're open for business again. And I guarantee you, my first month, I've had over $12 million. Like that. And PayPal would be increasing the amount of money. <laughs> we're going to take this much now from you, ICT. Thanks for doing business with us. Money is not what I need. I need to make sure that I have done the best I can to anyone that's willing to listen to me to prepare yourself and your family. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong about everything I'm saying here, what I've said the last two years, maybe well longer in 2019. No, longer than that, because in 2016. So whatever, the, how many years it is since... Uh, I think it was March and May of 2016. So you guys are collecting tweets and such. You have it back then if you could and, and share that. But uh, I was talking about all these things before it happened. And honestly, at the time when I was saying them, I was a little nervous in 2016. Before I started the mentorship, when I was talking about all these things, I was nervous about talking about it and telling you what I knew was coming. And then there's just like, you know, at this point, the cat's out of the bag now. No matter what I say, it's already in motion. Nothing I can do or you can do to stop it. So the only thing you can do is prepare. What do you do? You buy food, canned goods, non-perishable foods. And guess what, folks? Just because the date says it is best before, it doesn't mean it's expired. I had people in my own mentorship buy canned goods and then when it got to the date, because they didn't rotate their own food. Oh, this is no good. It's bad. I, I wasted money on listening to you. Really? I have food that's two years old that I still eat. And I do this all the time. I rotate a stock. I keep a pantry. I, basically, I have two pantries. I have, long, I have long-term storage. And I have a working pantry that I go through and I cycle through. And it's, it goes back farther than two years on some canned goods. It isn't going to go bad, folks. It's, it's more likely to lose some of its nutritional value, but it's not going to be poisonous to you. But if it doesn't have as much uh, you know, vitamins or minerals in the food versus starving to death, <laughs> yeah, I'll have that three-year-old can of green beans, no problem. So anyway, what's the point? Why am I, why am I even talking about this? Why am I boring the socks off of all of you? Why am I not getting to the point? The point is this. You're here because you want to learn how to read these markets. You want to learn how to do what it is I do, forecast and see it before it happens. And that's great. That's you know what I'm here to help you do. But part of this equation that you have to figure out on your own is how to navigate it with a clear conscience you got to be at peace with yourself, not being emotionally, psychologically influenced by anything. And let me tell you something. I'm a very, 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 very good trader. I can see things. I can execute very well. But guess what I can't do? I can't trade with precision while I'm starving to death. I can't focus on price action and do what it is I'm supposed to be doing and manage money correctly if my children can't eat. I can't sleep if I know that there's people wanting to get into other people's homes 
to get what they can't afford or procure because it's no longer available. Our our shelf system in groceries is a three day revolving stock. That's it. So when you go to a grocery store, you've been trained in America. It's always going to be on the shelf. Some of you've learned in the last six months. That's not true. And now when it is on the shelf, you don't want to pay twice what it costs because you think prices are going to go down. They're not going down. We're getting ready to see craziness, folks. So I'm not your typical Instagram, Facebook, YouTube guru. Okay. I'm going to show you what works that's consistent and that you can beat the shit out of these markets. You can. But I'm also going to talk about the real things that's going to be impactful to you succeeding or failing. And this is one of them. This is the absolute biggest elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. In 2020, I said that there's going to be uh, weaponized food in March of 2020. What does that mean? Well, this ruling class knows that whoever controls food controls the people. So they have made it expensive for food. It will continue to rise. And if you have not been paying attention since October of last year, there has been a timeline of food manufacturing plants and large producers of food exploding or burning down. And they come out and say, we have no interest of restarting. Really? And you have farmers that are coming out now admitting that they did something wrong by taking money for not planting their crops. This is engine, folks. Engineered famine. Whenever famine comes into the fray, it's not too long after that that war unfolds. And we have two events. One's about to unfold. One's already going on that they're pumping up more than it really is. Oh, Ukraine this and Ukraine that. Let me tell you something. Ukraine has nothing to do with what's going on. That's just the boogeyman to blame. Putin ain't doing what you're seeing unfold. He is part of it, though. The World Economic Forum is a bunch of folks that like to have everybody subscribe to their view. And everybody that's in government right now are linked to them. They were groomed by them. And that's just what it is. And when you hear about this great reset, how can they accomplish a great reset if they let every currency and every financial market operate the way they've always operated? Or allow some mysterious Satoshi. Think about this, folks. Think. I don't know why you guys haven't sat back and thought this through. But why the fuck would any country, least of all, America, let some unknown entity. You've never seen this guy's face. You know, Nobody knows who he is. Satoshi created a Bitcoin. And this is going to compete with the central banks. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah. You'll believe anything. You'll believe anything if you believe that that mysterious figure, this entity, Satoshi, come out there. And then all of a sudden the government said, yeah, we'll let that go. <laughs> Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Come on. Seriously? And you don't think the government put that together? Come on. Some of you make it too easy for them. And it's insane that you'll still tweet to me and defend it. Like, it's not true. It's true. Think about it. What's the logic you're holding on to? You honestly believe. You honestly believe <laughs> that these central banks are going to sit back and say, yeah, we'll take back seat to this. Hell no. Hell no. These banks go into other countries and says, fuck you. You're not the more. This guy is. But they're going to let this Mickey Mouse shit come along and take them out of their own game. Come on, people. Wake up. 
Shit is about to hit the fan and nobody's money is safe. Nobody's. Not mine. Not Musk's. Nobody. What are you, what are you resetting? Everything. Who gets to have what? And at what cost? And guess what? If you're not part of the club, if you're not bound down licking them fucking boots, you get to die. You'll have nothing and be happy. Folks, these are the motherfuckers that I turned away from. Do you fucking get it now? Look around. I'm promising you this. 12 to 18 months, what you see all around you is not going to be like this. It is not going to be like this. And if you are not putting every ounce of your effort in procuring over-the-counter medicines, food, non-perishable food, water filters, bottled water, fishing equipment, things that you can go out and get food. Let me tell you something. In four months... You're a deer, your avid deer hunter, boar hunter. You hunt bear. You don't know. Let me tell you something. America, we have more fucking guns in America than people realize. They can ban all the weapons they want. The weapons are still going to be there. And when they have to go out to the woods to get their food and everybody's doing the same thing, that ain't going to hold up long. It ain't going to hold up long. Fish. There's fish. And if you don't like fish, like my wife, she's not a fan of fish. I told her, I said, let me tell you something. I have done my best. I've done my best to make sure she has some of the creature comforts in the event that I can't get them. But if it goes longer than my stock, she's going to learn to love fucking tuna fish. She's going to love whatever, to come, whatever comes out of the water where I'm at. Bass, trout, flounder, even catfish. Oh, you shouldn't eat catfish. It doesn't have scales. I'm going to eat. Okay? I'm going to eat. Arise and kill and eat. That's how Peter was instructed. So please don't give me those scriptures. Don't do that. Don't come at me with that stuff. Okay? Because if you don't take care of your family, the Bible says, you're worse than an unbeliever. And I am doing the best I can because I see you all as part of my family. You have given me your time. You've given me your interest. And it would be a piece of shit move for me to know these things and not tell you. I've cleared my conscience. And people make jokes about where I learned this from and how I came here. Let me tell you something. Explain how the fuck I know this stuff five years before it happens all the time. Be part of their fucking club. I don't want to be in that world. I don't want to live like that. I make my fucking life the way it is. I make my choices. I have a belief and faith in somebody that has provided for me. And you may not want to hear about it, but guess what? Christ, Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is God that came in the flesh. He's the only God. And I'm telling you, if you aren't right with him, the way this ends, you ain't going to like it. And it's about to get really very painful just to get through the average day. Not sure if that phone call interrupted us, but hopefully it's still going on. But I think that's going to be the end of the tinfoil hat part of it. <laughs> so whatever that minute marker is right now for people that want to avoid all that kind of stuff. This is the conversation that you probably want to hear about um, when it comes to trading. I got questions a lot over the years about, you know, how did I used to trade before I 
could trade with intraday charts and look at data like that. You know, when I first started, how did I start doing it? And what time frames did I use? Because if I couldn't be in front of charts live, what was it that I did? I used the daily chart because I worked a job. And when I come home in the evening time, I would get off. My, my route would usually end around, I don't know, it depends. There was one day a week where I would get off at 4 o'clock. But, you know, for whatever reason, I would always hang out to the same time. I would normally even my regular day and hang out with my then boss, pick his brain and get inspired by him talking about how he made money, this and that thing. But when I first started trading, I was working with him. And I bought this this charting software called Metastock. I think you can still get it today, but it was really nice because it would make the charts for you, had all kinds of indicators and such when I had belief and faith in indicators but uh, I would look at the daily chart and try to determine where it was going to go up to I didn't want to short because I didn't believe in it I didn't have any faith in it I couldn't understand how I could sell something I don't own because that's essentially what you're doing when you're shorting so I avoided doing that I would only look to be a buyer and the way I framed it and how I actually started teaching before I should have been teaching because even you know, when I was Seeing it work, I thought I figured everything out before I did. And I was on America Online, and I was at the forums and posts, and like the, they called it message boards back then. And I would share what I thought was going to happen and what commodity. And I started posting my opinions about what I think is going to happen. And I never put up a disclaimer because I didn't understand the laws then. Like I didn't know anything about it. And I figured everybody could say whatever they wanted to say, free, you know, freedom of speech type thing. <clears throat> so I would post my opinions about what I would see. And because I thought that I'm sorry, everyone would appreciate me teaching what it is I was doing and how I picked certain markets, I would show them what I was doing. I would look at the daily chart. I think it's going to go up to this level here. And if it's going to go to that level, that means the next few days should start moving in that direction. So how would I time my trade? I would look at a 60-minute chart or hourly chart. And then when that's stochastic, that I would plot and a nine period, I'm sorry, 10 period Williams percent R. So I was using two overbought oversold indicators, not understanding that they both were saying the same thing because Williams percent R is basically stochastic because George Lane did not invent stochastic. Everybody in the book say, and he says he invented it, but he, he didn't. But Williams percent R is basically one part of what a stochastic is. And, Larry Williams created the Williams percent R. So when they were both in agreement and they were below the 30 basis line that would be used to uh, determine my buy or sell, if it was oversold, that means for stochastics, it would be like 30% or under. To me, that would be oversold or cheap, okay? What I would do is I would wait for it to go down, go oversold, come up out of the oversold and go back down and again, but price make a lower low, but the stochastic and RSI, I'm not sorry, not RSI, Williams percent R, be oversold at this time, but not expect that same low to be blown out with the indicator. So in other words, I'm looking at a what was considered a type one bullish divergence. A type two divergence, which is everybody calls a hidden divergence today, that was actually invented by Nick Van Ice. He was a small time trader he ran a company called Commodity Price Charts, and that was the best charting platform there ever was. They beat out CRB, in my opinion. They were just really nice charts, and I wish they were still in business because even though they're like end-of-day stuff, I still would use them because I loved them. They were just easy on the eye. It was just beautiful. And they were open, high, low, and closed bars, not candlesticks. But anyway, uh, Nick Van Ice created the um, and made it public with is referred to and he called type two trend following divergence but if you look at or google hidden divergence he never gets the credit for it so it's just one more thing that pisses me off about this industry like when I, when I teach something that's mine no one else has done it before someone else comes along and renames it and they try to get credit for themselves it's all bullshit so with looking at a daily chart expecting it to go higher how was i determining it was going to go higher what was the way of determining that i would look at an 18 and a 40 day moving average. If the 18 day was above the 40 day, 
and they were stacking. That means they were opening up and both of them pointing up together. That was my bias to look for longs. And then what I would look for is just the indicator going down to oversold and creating a bullish divergence. And the missing part of this that I didn't understand, which is the real reason why I was seeing success in the ideas that I was you know, trying to employ, was the market was extremely bullish anyway. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that the monthly and the weekly were already trying to get to objectives that I didn't even notice. So I was correct on my right side of the with And I was using technical indicators that at the time were lining up because I had it correct without knowing I had it correct. In other words, my faith in that system was rooted in the divergence pattern until the markets entered a market where it was going down. So when I entered a bear market, I couldn't make any money. Every trade, every single trade I got into was a failure. And I was getting mad and I would get in and I would do more leverage and not use a stop loss or open the stop loss when it was going towards where I my stop, I would move it bigger. And it would just expand to take the liquidity below a short term low. Because in my mind, when I first started, I had the same books that you all probably seen already or have in your Amazon cart ready to buy and haven't pushed a button yet. Don't buy them. I'm going to tell you something. They're going to fucking book on Amazon. It's going to teach you how to trade profitably, period. End of story. Don't ask me for a title that tells you to do that because they don't exist. They all tell you bullshit. They'll get you out there doing the same nonsense. And the books that I bought and subscribed to and listened to the PCR tapes and DVDs when they were starting to come out, they're all telling you to do the same thing. Buy double bottoms, short double tops. Look at moving average crossovers. I, I didn't look at a crossover. The crossover didn't mean shit to me. I want to see something on a daily chart that has sustained movement. And that's what I mean by the 18 and 40 day moving average. Here's a little tip for you that have been staying this long in the video. Okay. If you take a 18 day and a 40 day moving average and apply it to your daily chart, what kind of moving average? I use the exponential moving average. This is going to be like a training wheel for daily bias. Okay. Listen, folks. If you take an 18 day and a 40 day moving average and apply it to a daily chart, after they cross over, like if the 18 day crosses above the 40, and then there is days, not as soon as it crosses over, because that's bullshit. You want to see that the market is already starting to expand and start moving higher. When that occurs, and you can see the draw on liquidity on a weekly chart that's above market price, if the daily chart shows the 18 day and the 40 day moving averages going up together, they're both now pointing the same direction. If there is a fair value gap below price on the daily chart, watch how it goes down and goes into that fair value gap and then runs your objective. Teach me bias. Here's one more instance of it. Every time I talk to you, I'm teaching you bias. There's so many ways to apply daily bias. Are you using daily bias for your intraday trade? Are you using daily bias to get in position for a swing trade or short term trade? What are, you, what are you doing? Because I can use daily bias to do a market reversal profile too and be in a will be considered bullish market and bias. I could use that bullish bias and then anticipate a market reversal in the same day. That's advanced. And you can't ever understand that until you understand how to subscribe, follow the average daily bias movement. Is it likely to keep going higher or is it likely to keep going lower? That's all you have to figure out. And then look for setups that go with that. And how I determined that was the best way of doing it by understanding how I failed initially. Because the success I had initially with buying bullish divergence was the fact that I had an unknown alignment with bias on a higher time frame chart, weekly and monthly. So when I teach my private mentorship group, when we sit down every single week, I'm teaching them to predict the weekly range expansion, higher or lower. And then all you need to do is look for one move in the scope of Sunday's opening to Friday's close. Find one move that moves in that expected direction. The probabilities in a market that's bullish having a move that goes down to a fair value gap and runs relative equal highs or an old high. That is so monumental in terms of odds in your favor, it's unbelievable, but you're not going to understand it. You're not going to believe it until you go into the charts yourself and see it. 
back test it. Look and see if I'm talking out my ass. If you go into the charts and you look for these things with conviction, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to prove ICT wrong. Go in there and do it. Everybody that's ever done that, they're converted. Done. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's there now. It's like riding a bike. So over those initial months, I started determining that I would get stopped out. And then I created what I was teaching back in 1996 and 97, um, shadow boxes. Okay. And what they were is where I thought stop loss orders would be, and they would run the stops. So they would run the stops and then go. So what I would do is I would wait for them to do a stop hunt. I didn't have the courage to go in and buy under the low, but I knew enough that it would go under them. And then once it did that, then I would use an hourly bullish divergence type one. And then I would get along on that, knowing that the backdrop behind the story, the narrative was they already went for the people for the stop hunt. So now my stop won't be hunted because they already did that work behind us. And that was what I was trading. Then eventually that morphed into when I got uh, the book Street Smarts by Linda Rash and Larry Connors. It gave me a little bit more confidence to go in because I didn't knew enough that stop hunt because I was a victim of them. <laughs> Many accounts being dusted because of it. But the turtle suit pattern that they taught in that book, I don't trade that pattern. But the logic of it is what I use when I say turtle soup, I'm paying homage to that book, those authors, those traders, and I'm not teaching theirs. I'm not reinventing it either. It was just the logic of buying below an old low or shorting above an old high. That book gave me the confidence to go in and start doing that. So when I tell you that book is noteworthy, it's because it had a tremendous impact on my understanding of, of price action and trading. It's scary to go into a chart and watch it really recklessly just drop suddenly right below an old low and view that as something you want to buy. That's a scary feeling. when You've, you've never done it before. It's, it's, it's hard to articulate it until you look at it and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to expect this to happen. And then try. It, it feels uncomfortable. And those are the trades that work. The most uncomfortable, alien-looking, most suspect-looking trades, they're the ones that work. The ones that you sit in front of your charts, you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. You're looking at it and thinking, well, I'm bored. You know, I, I'm going to just go in and just sell it here because it's been going up. It's, it's got to go down now. And all of a sudden, it goes up 150 pips more. Right from when you got in at. And then how you feel. <laughs> yeah. I've done all that stuff before. I've done all that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know what it feels like. Okay, But all these early stages of my development the lessons that I have gleaned from those painful events that were at the time feeling like impediments to my development, feeling like I couldn't get this figured out and wanting to quit and stopping periodically. When I had these moments of, I can't do it. I've done blown another account. I can't do this. I can't do this. Well, I got a half right. I can't do it and be successful doing what I'm doing. So I had to change some so, obviously, by chance, meetings and things that I did on rec leverage that could have buried me easily and making those calls publicly, and they were going parabolic, you know, big moves happening and just unfolding in front of everybody's eyes. The government reached out to me, sent a person to my aunt's house, nice, pleasant gentleman, young guy, out on my aunt's door. Walked over to the door, opened it up. Hello? I'm looking for Michael Huddleston. I said, I'm Michael. You have been served. And put an envelope right in my hand and calmly walked back to his car and drove away. And it was from the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And they were requesting me to give them my computer, all of uh, my posts on my forum or message board back then. And they were actually subpoenaing the, uh, the people that were talking to me on America Online. But 
as fate would have it, my laptop died. So I didn't have anything to give them. And I ended up calling in, talking to uh, the lady that was, I guess, in charge of you know, reaching out to me. And I said, look, I'm, I'm not sure what this is all about. She said, well, do you have a lawyer? And I was like, no, what do I need a lawyer for? She's like, well, what you're doing is illegal. Do you know that? <laughs> I was like, what am, what am, I, what am I doing that's illegal? What are you talking about? Like, I had no idea what this was all about. And all of a sudden, she puts me on speakerphone, and there was other people she announced by name. And she said that, you know, her name's Lydia, and whatever her last name was, I can't recall. But she's like, yeah, um, you're posting investment advice. Are you licensed to do that? I'm like, I'm not giving anybody advice. I'm just telling them what I'm doing and what I think. It's my opinion. I got freedom of speech. She goes, nah, you need to talk to a lawyer because this isn't freedom of speech. And what you're doing is you're basically enticing people to invest money and you're not giving them any risk disclosure, none. And I was like, what the hell? So long story short, I obviously gave them the, the ICT treatment, kind of like what you would expect from me. And I basically told them to fuck off and I wasn't going to go anywhere to see anybody, nothing. And if they wanted me to stop, I'll do that. But I have nothing to give. My laptop was dead. It was already thrown away and there's nothing I can do. So if they want to find anything, whatever's on the message board is what I said publicly. And that's why I say to you all and these trolls that come out and say, oh yeah, ICT is fraud and this one, fraud and that one. I'm calling out in front of everybody. There's no secret calls in a private group anywhere. I call the market publicly and I use the things I teach. And I can trade in front of anybody. You want to put a courtroom in place? I'll fucking trade in front of them too. Okay? I don't give a shit. I can do this stuff. I was wrong back in the 90s because I didn't know the law about risk disclaimers. That's why it drives you nuts that I teach in a demo. Because I avoid all that horse shit. That's why my videos have an intro of a risk disclaimer. That's why I tell these young cats on YouTube, they're, they're barking up a tree they don't want to mess with. Oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm making a million dollars. I'm living in an apartment. I only own a car. But it's all about that millionaire lifestyle. And I try to tell this guy, you need to put risk the same up. But I'm the jerk. Okay. Sit back. And watch what happens. I've lived this stuff, folks. I know, I know what pitfalls are there. I know how far I can go. And I know what I'm not to do. And it comes to me and they say, oh, well, wh why are you doing a demo? Why is it working like I said it's going to work? That's the real question. Why are you worried about me doing it with a live account? I've already proved that it can double the account in a short span of time. My son with another broker from another clown on YouTube smoked that small challenge. Ross Cameron doesn't even know that guy, by the way. But apparently they had a competition. <laughs> Robin's go, bitch. Let's go. So, anyway. We have... I think covered everything on my hit list today. Yep, I think I covered it all. So, anyway. I had a lot of things on my mind. I wanted to talk, obviously... When I'm my wife, <laughs> she's the boss. Okay, I do have a boss, and unfortunately, she was trapped in the car with me. <laughs> she was trapped in the car with me, and uh, we were doing four-hour intervals. Like I would drive for four hours, and she would drive for four hours, and vice versa back and forth. So, what I was trying to do was I was trying to time it. <laughs> the the market maker in me time her going to sleep, taking of a, a nap, and I could get on here and jawbone, and obviously she wasn't having it because she knows me she knows me and she knows that i'm i am absolutely 100 percent balanced okay that is a real thing and i can i can swing from euphoric to aggressive irritable and then there's never really a middle ground being bipolar is a, a it's a very hard thing to do and i'm never going to put medicine in me because i'm not going to be drugged. I'm not going to do it. So that's why I'm not going to be the mentor for everybody. 
I'm going to say things that's going to hurt your feelings, but it's, the, it's still the truth. And I would rather feel clean with my conscience, having been honest and truthful the entire time. And some of you say, this guy, I can't deal with him. That's okay. I can accept that. Wonderful. You know, go about your business. You know, if, if you ever want to come back and listen, the stuff's online, you can come and listen to it. It is what it is. But I am the way I am. I was made this way. I used to think it was a disability, like it was a problem. When I stopped looking at it like that and just embraced the fact that I have multiple gears. Okay. I, I, I can go hard and fast. And sometimes I have to downshift. Sometimes the downshifting in it is times when I don't want to downshift, but I still want to go, go, go. And that creates more of an imbalance. So that's why uh, live streams for me is a very hard thing to do because if I make myself available to people that are fucking stupid and they come at me with dumb shit, I'm going to let them know. <laughs> and that will be easy for me to be derailed and I'll never accomplish what it is I'm trying to do or whatever I'm trying to cover is a topic. So obviously you've seen that couple did on YouTube. I ignored the chat window because I know the trolls would be in there and I'll have fun with them. But much fun doing that. I will never get through like I did today. I had a whole list of things I wanted to cover and I did it. But if I was watching the feed on Twitter or if I was in a room like, with other people where they could say something to me, um, some of the hardline trolls and I have a troll. OK, I had one troll that I absolutely sometimes listen to and almost piss myself laughing. I think he is wasting his time doing his ridiculous market commentaries. His name is Simpleton. I guess it's Simpleton, whatever. But he, this guy, I'm telling you, <laughs> he is my favorite troll. He he has ripped my ass so many times in the past where I've literally almost pissed myself laughing. I've woke my wife up several times listening to him. And whether the guy thinks I'm a fraud, whether he thinks I can trade or not, it, it's irrelevant to me because I think sometimes he has comedic gold like, this guy is so fucking funny. He's funny. hes I don't even know if he realizes he's as funny as he is, but his dry humor, I love it. I love it. And everybody else pales to him. Told me. Never comes to that level because he's just, he doesn't oversell it. He doesn't live his life trying to troll me. <laughs> okay. He just drops his stuff once in a while and it's just funny shit. It's just funny. It's funny. And do I think the guy can? I don't know. I could care less. But I think when he does whatever he does to try to be funny, when it comes to me, I think it's it's hilarious. But everybody else has ever done anything in the past. They've, they're just miserable failures. Not even entertaining in the least either. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for today. I covered uh, how I started and what I was trading, how I traded. It was, it was, it's just that simple, folks. I know you're probably looking for some other additions to some appendage to uh, something so simple. But if the logic isn't on par with the current narrative, no matter what you do, it's going to fail. So I gave you a tip on how you can look at how the moving averages, which is one of the ways I taught on my YouTube channel. Go and look at those old lessons. Those moving averages, I teach to eventually move away from them. So you don't need them Initially, they're those training wheels to help you see when those when that 18 and 40 day moving average is slanting up on the daily chart. It's moving in the same direction and you're bullish and there's something above price, uh, old high or relative equal highs. That's the draw on liquidity. Then you have momentum behind you. See, some of you are afraid to pick a fair value gap. You're like, how do I know if it's going to go down to that fair value gap? Well, if it's going to go down to a discount, it's going to drop down into that to go and rebalance an inefficiency. The market participants that know what they're looking for, they're going to be buying in there. If they're not buying inside of a fair value gap below the market when it's bullish, they're going to be buying underneath a short-term low where their sell stops. They're the only two things that happen, folks. There's nothing else that happens. Your indicators don't do shit. Mine weren't doing anything. They were just telling me what was already in the price chart that I couldn't see. So I teach my students, don't lean on that logic of an indicator. But if you understand how to read the narrative, 
an indicator in the, in the person that is trained under me, you can make indicators work. I know I get a lot of flack from people that get their feelings hurt because I'll tell everybody, you know, trade naked or die. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna make me put an indicator on my chart anymore. But if I put an indicator on my chart and trade the way I trade now, like I could literally put settings together. I've, I've literally thought about doing this. <laughs> Just the troll. I was literally going to come up with a uh, a layout with a specific set of indicators and settings and such and sell the idea publicly on YouTube that this was the method. But really, it would be leaning on the things I teach with price action. And the indicators will, in that instance, they will line up. That's why when you write books and you sell your back hindsight moves, you have the benefit of it already moved. So the bias before it happened, because in that chart, it's already done. Well, when you know the logic and the narrative before the market prints on that hard right edge, you'll know what those indicators are going to do. And you'll find those settings that match up where it, in hindsight, it looked, oh, this is easy. This indicator does this. But the indicator isn't doing anything but measuring and compressing and twisting and contorting the data that price has already made available to everyone else. It's beating the data, manipulating it to display something that price itself is already doing. You need an overbought, oversold indicator to determine your overbought, oversold? If you do, you have the mentorship series I've done on 2022 yet. You haven't done it. If you go through the lessons I already put up there, you'll know right away that you don't need an overbought, oversold indicator. You'll know what overbought and oversold is relative to the present market conditions and market structure. So it's, it's a matter of maturity. In the beginning, I was immature, had no idea what I was doing, and I believe that all the high-end traders were having multiple, lots of indicators on their charts. And they're just distracting you. If you just look at what it's likely to go to, why should it go there? What day of the week should it try to reach for it? What time of that day because the economic calendar? Is it going to take stops before it goes there, or is it going to rebalance before it goes there? Only two things that happen. Or, no, 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 let me, let me go back. That's not incorrect, I see, Timmy correct you the third is it just runs away without you and that's usually during the, the economic news event so there's three outcomes either it goes into a fair value you got to rebalance before it goes to their own, own liquidity or it goes down below an old low if you're bullish or above an old high if you're bearish then it goes to your draw on liquidity or the move at the release time and day when the report comes out they reprice immediately and you don't have an option so there's your three things now Generally, the third doesn't happen all the time. It's the least occurrence. So now how can you use the other two? Which one do I do, ICT? Well, does the market have a short-term low that it could run down below and you're bullish? Then you expect that. If there is no close proximity short-term low, but there is a fair value gap, what are you going to reach for? The short-term low that doesn't appear in the chart or the fair value gap? Hello? Hello? You paying attention? It's not that hard, folks. But you got to go through these boring, long discussions to get to the gems that I tuck away for the lazy never to find. <laughs> I got a busy week catching up with my mentorship on the private group and obviously with on YouTube. So I will be laying little sugar sweets in your hot little hands starting on Monday. The rest of today and tomorrow, I'm going to be relaxing and trying to get myself acclimated to our local time here. So enjoy your weekend. And until I talk to you next time, be safe.